Hey everyone, I finally got an HP ProBook X360 435G7, which by the way is quite a mouthful, after UPS somehow lost the laptop. After the laptop was scanned in Kentucky, over a week later it appeared in Jacksonville and got sent back to Kentucky before San Francisco. In case anyone is wondering how long it took to get the laptop, I ordered it on September 30th with an estimated ship date of October 29th and actually shipped out October 23rd and finally arrived November 9th with a five to six day delay in shipping. In the end, it almost took a month and a half to get the laptop. The specs of the laptop are an AMD Ryzen 4750U eight core 16 thread processor, four gigs of DDR4, which out of curiosity, I tested to see how well four gigabytes would have worked in Linux. 128 gig SATA SSD, Intel AX200 Wi-Fi, 13-inch 250-nit touchscreen LCD, 45-watt-hour battery, and free DOS. I purchased two 16-gig DDR4 3200MHz sticks of memory and already had a 512GB Samsung SSD which I installed Windows 10 on. Just like the Lenovo X13 and T14 I unboxed, there isn't much in the box other than the charger and some manuals. On the left side of the laptop you have a USB 3.0 port, a fan vent, and on the right side the charging port, one USB-C port, one USB 3 port, a headphone slash mic combo jack, and a micro SD card reader. I'm actually glad that HP put the vent on the left side of the laptop so that the warm air isn't blasting at your hand if you're using the mouse on the right side of the laptop. Let's pop the bottom cover off and see what's underneath. Interestingly, there's covers for the memory slots and the SSD, and one of the reasons I was interested in this laptop is the fact that it has two DIMM slots, which is usually unheard of for a laptop of this size. Popping off the covers, you'll see one stick of 4GB DDR4 memory and a Kingston 128GB SATA SSD. Other than that, there's the Intel AX200 Wi-Fi card and a 45 watt hour battery. It looks like there's actually a room for a larger battery if you choose not to purchase the optional camera. And there's a separate connector for the touch panel and G-sensor from the LCD connector. Other manufacturers usually use a 40 pin cable for touchscreens, so it's rather interesting to see that HP went this route. Other manufacturers usually use a 40 pin LCD cable for touchscreens, so it's rather interesting to see that HP went a different route. The laptop as a whole is made out of aluminum, which has a nice feel to it, but I'm worried that it won't hold up to scratches, and I'm not a fan of the chrome HP badge on the laptop lid. It actually looks a little corny and too flashy for my taste. The bottom cover is a mixture of aluminum and plastic, and I'm guessing the plastic is there for rigidity. Surprisingly, the laptop lid has no flex, which may partially be due to the glass for the touchscreen. And the palm rest actually has a lot less flex than the T14 I recently reviewed. Personally, I prefer the Lenovo keyboard since it has a little bit more travel and to me has a better feel since each key has less side-to-side -side play, 
but it was still nice to type on HP's keyboard. Compared to the Lenovo X13, 435 does have a wider keyboard, so some people may prefer that, but also keep in mind that the up and down arrows are reduced in height and have a somewhat awkward placement, and I'm personally still trying to get used to it. I tried to look up the LCD panel that's used in this laptop, and the only model number I saw for the screen was BOE0848 which has a manufacturing date of the first week of 2008, but other than that, couldn't find much information on it online. HP claims that it's a 250 net screen and appears to be an IPS screen based on the viewing angles. I think it may have a little bit more vibrance due to the fact that it has a glass touchscreen, but I think for a touchscreen laptop, I would rather have a non-glass touchscreen since it saves weight, doesn't get as many smudges, and is less likely to get damaged or scratched. The hinges allow the screen to be flipped 180 degrees into tablet mode, but the hinges seem a little loose, and moving the laptop around causes the laptop screen to fall backwards, which concerns me in regards to the longevity of the hinges. I first installed Manjaro on the laptop and did some performance testing with a combination of a single 4 gig stick, a 16 gig stick, a 16 gig and 4 gig stick, and a 16 gig and a 16 gig stick. And obviously dual channel memory improved performance dramatically. Performance numbers with two sticks of 16 gig DDR4 3200 MHz memory came out to an average of 11,102 frames per second in GLX gears. And 4702 in GeoMark 2 over an average of three runs. Here you can see the results for GeoMark 2 and GLX gears with other memory combinations. I figured it would be better to visualize it this way than naming off a bunch of numbers. Also in case you're curious, 4GB barely runs on Manjaro. I installed Windows 10 afterwards and only tested the laptop's performance with two 16 gig sticks of memory since I already did some performance testing with different variations of memory in Manjaro. User benchmark says the laptop is performing normally. In Cinebench R20 results, average 471 for single core performance and 3212 for multi core performance over three runs. Novabench averaged 2851 over 3 runs. Interestingly, performance on this laptop was definitely better than the X13 and closer to a T14, but also performed not quite as well as a T14. If you look at the thermal design between the X13, the ProBook 435, and the T14, you can see that the X13's heatsink and fan are a lot smaller than the 435 or T14, which partially explains the difference in performance. The X13 and 435 have a TDP of 15 watts, while the T14 has a TDP of 25 watts, but it seems like the 435 actually boosts TDP up to about 20 watts. As for fan noise, it seems to be a little bit more noticeable on the 435 over the X13 and T14, and in quiet environments, it did start to get a little annoying after a while. I did notice that the temperature sometimes would take a while to drop, and I wasn't sure if it was a design thermal issue, but the laptop seemed to not have issues with performance when running benchmarks.
My guess is this may be something that HP is doing with the firmware to balance noise and temperature. If I were to rate keyboard and palm rest feel between the three laptops, I would say the X13 has the best overall feel, followed by the 435 and finally the T14. I do like the touchpad more on the HP more than the ThinkPad since it seems to have fewer false positives for me when using two fingers to operate the touchpad. I did see that in the BIOS settings there was something about HP Remote Diagnostics which I feel like could be a security or privacy issue, but I didn't really look into this. If anybody knows about this feature, please comment below. The laptop consumed about 7.8 watts idle at full brightness and around 7.5 watts at 50% brightness, so expect about a 5.5 hour battery life. Webcam performance isn't very good and the speakers aren't that great either, which you can see here. The touchscreen seems to work fine and flips a full 180 degrees so you can use it like a tablet. There's magnets on the bottom cover that hold the LCD in place when used like a tablet, but if you use the laptop normally the magnets will actually hold the laptop to a metal desk, which I guess could be good or bad. PWM is pretty awful as you'll see here, especially on the camera, and I wish they hadn't used PWM to control brightness of the screen. Changing the scaling as usual from 150% to 100% makes the screen look better, but if you use the touchscreen often, you may be better off leaving the scaling at 150%. One last thing I would like to point out is that this laptop seems to have a pretty old design and they only updated what was necessary to fit the latest AMD Ryzen processor in here. So why would I think this is the case? HP didn't upgrade the HDMI port from 1.4 to 2.0. They're still using a barrel jack instead of replacing it with a second USB-C port and the camera seems to be outdated. Last but not least, the use of PWM to control the screen brightness is pretty bad too, and this should also be changed.
From a serviceability standpoint, it seems like the keyboard and palm rests are one piece, which is a rather interesting design choice. If you aren't worried about expandability and want the portability, go with the X13. Between the 435 and the T14, I would go with the T14 with the low power 400 nit screen and purchase it with 16 gigs on board and then add my own 16 gig memory module. The 435 is good in its own ways, but with it being outdated and being rather expensive deters me from buying it over the T14. Anyways, I hope for anyone that was looking for a business grade AMD Ryzen laptop, this helped. I did record installing Manjaro and testing out functionality right out of the box, installing Windows 10 from scratch and drivers, as well as disassembling and reassembling the bottom portion of the laptop. If anyone is interested in seeing any of these videos, comment below and I'll upload them if there's enough interest. Like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.